Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of my Dungeon Boss PvP series. Today I'm going to be going over a basic uh, principle that I think everyone should be aware of at this point, uh, if they're not already, and that is going to be discussing hero power when going into PvP. So looking at this opponent here, um, aside from the rune glitches, um, he has a pretty high hero power, and I think uh, in days past, a lot of people saw hero power as basically a metric to determine how difficult this team was going to be. Now, if that's the case, a 31,000 hero power should make this team uh, almost unbeatable um, if you're just balancing out on, on hero power. However, what I wanted to mention to everybody is uh, to kind of disregard hero power when looking at uh, raids and actually focus more so on the actual runes themselves because hero power isn't always a good example. So um, I'm just doing one of my standard teams here for pretty much anybody that has a, uh, a blue hero. So if I'm going against Grognogs and Igarox, uh, I almost always go with uh, Zen Viperio. And actually, uh, looking over the runes, I felt like their leadoff Kiro was not going to be able to kill my Viperia. Now, as we're getting to the end of this PvP season, I see people uh, getting better and better runes. And actually, my Viperia is actually starting to die more often. So, once the Zen plus one mechanic goes away and the, the new season starts, I, I feel like Viperia is going to be kind of uh, out the door as far as my PvP strategy goes. But... So this team with a, a massive dose of hero power should be uh, super powerful. And now I'm going to lead off with my, my Viperia here. And she does a pretty good amount of damage. So didn't do much to Torchy because of the, the elemental disadvantage. And Kira tends to dodge stuff. But once Shade's gone, this team is pretty much toasted. Down goes Igarok, down goes Torchy, and now it's four on one. So no matter what that guy has, he just flat out can't uh, he can't win at this point unless he literally dodges every single attack. Um, but uh, even if that were the case, I would ultimately just do Spirit Link and have him kill himself, even if uh, I was at the, the end of the line there. So basically, don't look at hero power when when attacking somebody. So this is one version of that. When you see somebody that's got a really high hero power, don't disregard it just because it's a high hero power. That's, uh, like I said, it's not a very good metric of how things are actually done. So take the time to look through all the actual runes, see what you can do to actually uh, take one of your better teams and go ahead and take them out. Now, obviously hero power doesn't equate to the trophies anymore. So if they're easy enough to take out, like I felt this one was gonna do, um, just, uh, Make sure it's part of your uh, your streak. So this next one is the other end of the spectrum, where I have a massive uh, amount of hero power compared to their hero power and their level. And uh, I made a, a pretty silly mistake of not even really looking over the runes at this one, which is kind of breaking one of my own cardinal rules, because I felt their level and their hero power was so much more insignificant. They didn't have uh, Masuda Kira, so I knew that my undead... Uh, realistically should have just walloped these guys. So the opening Shadow Blade did pretty good uh, damage against uh, Yorick, but honestly, he, he was never going to kill anybody except for Shade, in my opinion. The real shocking thing was this turn here. Um, this guy here obviously had his Astrid ruined out uh, heavily towards attack, which I just don't see that often. So... Instead of just attacking, I decided to go with Vigilance on Hansuke. Um, just uh, in case there's any basic attacks, maybe he could uh, you know, help save somebody. But I ultimately uh, you know, didn't expect too much out of here. So, marked Emily because uh, I don't want her bringing anybody back from the dead. And I know that Zom's going to be able to take her down uh, pretty easily. And if he doesn't, at least uh, she's going to lose energy. So once Emily's gone, there's really no there's no danger in this team, in my opinion. Um, my attack is going to be far better than Astrid's defense, so her just a scratch isn't going to be a problem. Um, hitting Shadowblade is just a matter of actually getting a hit on him, and then Torchy, or not Torchy, uh, Bobble is just kind of there. So just waiting my turn here. Get the electric skin, one of Bobble's uh, main features, which is great for them. So 
So now that I kind of expected. Uh, Astrid against Hansuke was probably going to end up that way in, in some fashion. Unless Yorick would have did an epic attack on her in the previous turn. Um, wasn't going to do much, but he did it now. And now it's just uh, two on two. Two big hitters with pretty decent defense versus two uh, squishy guys. So when I saw that, I, I was curious why... Um, Zom didn't do any damage against Bobble, and that's what really got me worried in this one because I thought uh, there must have been something involved there, and then looking at it again, he still didn't do any damage. Now, my my Zom is pretty heavily ruined out for attack, so he should be doing some damage. I saw that there was uh, uh, the fact that he's flying and the fact that he is uh, armored was going to reduce it, but uh, ultimately, I felt like he should have still been doing some damage, even if it's only a little bit. I thought it was kind of like a, an Emily mechanic where somebody's just got massive amounts of, uh, of uh, um, damage reduction. So I was kind of pointless there. I was throwing a mark for death on him, not forgetting that he was a construct. So that was kind of a stupid move, but still not doing any damage to him. Uh, so I decided to heal with Zom because I was getting a little bit concerned that this guy was basically unkillable. Um, at this point, um, like I said, I, I kind of didn't expect to win because I didn't know what was going on because it wasn't doing any damage at all. And so uh, I'm calling for uh, for ideas from viewers to help me understand what it is about Bobble that makes him so dangerous. So then I slowed it down here, and then I saw this, that there was zero damage from darkness. And now that was ultimately what uh, the problem was here. And so I don't know if that's a rune that this guy has. So if anybody knows Angry Unfried, I would love to know what uh, what runes he has on here. If it's just a massive amount of uh, damage reduction or if it is indeed uh, take no damage from dark attacks. Because whatever that was, it's a pretty awesome rune if he's able to just negate every single dark attack that comes his way. Um, I would love to have my, my hand on some of those runes there. So that basically negates Zom altogether. Fortunately, Yorick finally steps up and, and gets a hit on him. I don't know why he was missing so much in the past, but uh, we finally got a hit on him and we were able to take him down. So this person here had a really low hero power and a much lower level, but was able to still almost beat me. So with that said, um, like I said, I'm, I'm curious to know what uh, sort of a rune that was that he had on this guy and uh, any other mechanics that Bobble might have that might uh, be uh, helpful as I don't uh, I don't use him yet. I don't have him unlocked. So, so with that said, uh, that's going to wrap up this episode of the PvP series. Just remember to always take a look at the runes and uh, not necessarily hero power. Thanks.